When I speak with people who are new to serverless, testing is often the thing that they find the most difficult to get their head around. And I think it boils down to three main factors. Number one is that serverless is an enabler and lets us build more complex systems that are often event-driven and distributed. And serverless technologies such as AWS Lambda represent a big paradigm shift in terms of how we build and run applications, and it challenges many of the practices that have evolved with running and managing servers. And if you try to force those old habits and practices onto serverless, then you're going to experience frictions and problems because they just don't fit. Lastly, the whole serverless ecosystem is still evolving rapidly. More tools and services are becoming available, and what is considered best or leading practices are still changing, and people are still working out how best to approach certain problems or what to do in different circumstances. You might think that building more complex systems is not a good thing because they're more complex, right? But complexity on its own is not a bad thing. And tools that allow us to take on more complex tasks is how we have progressed as a society. If you think back to the industrial revolution or the personal computing revolution, both significantly changed the trajectory of human society and raised the productivities and living standards of people all around the world. They simplified existing problems like doing complex calculations or your business accounting. And they raised the complexity ceiling of what we are able to achieve with machines. We were able to make items and tools that were not possible before the industrial revolution. And without computers, we wouldn't have any of the things that modern life depends on, like mobile phones, YouTube, online shopping, and the internet. And the AI revolution that we're experiencing right now would change creative work forever. And allow skilled users to turn their imaginations into art, music, and videos. In fact, both of these images were generated by Dali using simple prompts such as a drawing of workers in a factory during the Industrial Revolution. And just as these technologies revolutionized how we work, serverless technologies have revolutionized how we build applications and allow us to be much more productive. And if I think back to the early 2010s, I was already using AWS and running EC2 machines, and then moved to using containers with Elastic Beanstalk. And I would spend about 70% of my time dealing with infrastructure, because there are plenty of stuffs to do. There's all the networking stuff, and you have to get them right so that attackers can't access your data and hijack your servers. And debugging networking issues are always tough. Even for me, even though I've been doing this for years, and then you gotta worry about the virtualization layer, patching your machine images, setting up scaling parameters and load balancers, and installing monitoring agents, and do capacity planning, and so on and so on. And then you gotta prepare your application, choose the web framework, set up middlewares for authentications, and so on and so forth. Before you can get to writing that couple of lines of code that actually does what your customer needs, with serverless we don't have to do any of that, and yet we still get to enjoy the benefits because somebody else at AWS has done that for us, and that allows us to build more robust and scalable systems much more easily, and it allows us to take on more complex problems and build more complex systems, and we can do that. With fewer resources and less effort, because we no longer have to spend most of our working hours dealing with infrastructure concerns, and you'll find that many of these serverless applications are very event-driven, and that in itself has some inherent complexities, and it also makes testing more difficult because the tools and practices for testing event-driven applications. Are just not as well developed as testing for, say, REST APIs. But we also need to talk about the fact that serverless is also a big paradigm shift from how we used to build applications. As we moved from running our own on-premises servers to renting EC2 machines to managing containers in ECS, getting compute resources on demand has become much easier, 
and more efficient. But the unit of compute is still something that looks like a server that we pay for by uptime. And that has allowed us to lift and shift our workloads without fundamentally changing how we build applications. And when it comes to AWS Lambda, that unit of compute is now a single function that represents just a part of your application, but is independently scalable, deployable, and each invocation runs in a separate execution environment. So errors in one request is not going to take down the server and kill the application. In fact, Lambda effectively eliminates the entire class of errors and indeed security attack services because we no longer need to manage the execution environment ourselves. There's no need to patch the operating system or worry about unsecured network ports. The whole execution environment has been secured by AWS and let's be honest, they can do a much better job than most of us are able to do ourselves. But the fact that writing a Lambda function is so different from say, writing an ExpressJS app, it has implications on how we structure our code and how we run application and how we test them. And serverless is not just about Lambda or function as a service in general, because when we talk about serverless technologies, we typically refer to technologies where we don't need to manage or provision any servers. We don't need to configure how it's going to scale itself to meet our traffic demands. And ideally, we don't even have to pay for it if no one is using our app. And by that notion, many other services should be considered serverless. S3 is a serverless storage service. DynamoDB is a serverless NoSQL database. And AppSync is a serverless GraphQL API service. And you can see these services pop up a lot in serverless applications. In fact, the likes of AppSync, API Gateway, and the Step Functions let you integrate with other AWS services such as S3 or DynamoDB directly without needing to use the Lambda function. And for many, this is the preferred way to use these services because it gives you the best performance and cost. But then how do you test these direct integrations? And since each of these services does direct integrations differently, do we also need a different approach for each service when it comes to testing? And the tools and practices for testing event-driven applications and serverless applications in general are still very much evolving and changing as new tools become available or the services themselves are updated. So it's still very much a constantly changing landscape. As a newcomer to serverless, you might be asking if you should use local simulators like LocalStack, or should you test everything in the cloud? But how do you make sure that you still have that fast feedback loop? Deploying to the cloud takes time, and why do I have to wait minutes just to test a small change in my code? And although some tools let you invoke Lambda functions locally, these are more for experimentation and trying things out, not for doing automated testing. And how you test your code is very much connected to other practices, like whether you're using multiple AWS accounts for different environments, if you're creating temporary stacks for feature work, and if you're using hexagonal architectures or similar patterns to create abstractions between domain logic and glue code. All these things can work with or against your approach to testing. And right now, we just don't have any in-depth training materials out there that connect all the dots together. And it's difficult to learn by reading bits and pieces from different places and different people and try to come up with a coherent strategy that works well together. Which is why I'm making this course. And in the next lesson, let me give you an idea of what you can expect from this course. Hi, I hope you have enjoyed this preview lesson from my latest course, Testing Serverless Architectures where I'll teach you everything I know about testing, including dedicated chapters on each type of popular architecture and demonstrate how to efficiently test them and overcome the challenges that are specific to each architectural style and service. Along the way, you will learn so much, including how to think and strategize about your approach to testing, what are the different types of tests you need and when you should use which, and the why and the how to use ephemeral environments to make testing and the collaboration so much easier. 
how to debug failing end-to-end -end tests and why they are important signal that you shouldn't ignore. And we'll talk about the challenges of testing event-driven architectures and some really helpful tips and tricks that's going to make testing so much easier even in a complex environment with lots of different event publishers and consumers. And we'll touch on testing in production, what it means, and the popular practices such as smoke testing, feature toggling, and of course, chaos engineering. You will have access to all the lectures as well as to the exclusive member-only project so that you can try these ideas out for yourself. And you can also get 15% off with the code on the screen right now. So hope to see you there. Until then, bye for now.